I would be coming in with also my own, you know, six figure salary. Don't and give a shit about your money. I know they don't, but I'm just saying I would be coming in with my own. So it's not like I'm coming to them with my money, but I know that I have Rochelle, a really. We don't care about your money or your career. All righty, and welcome back to my channel. This is your man, DeAndre Saxon. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down a video where Kevin Samuels is having a hard reality check with a woman out of Chicago. She's 38 years old. She makes six figures. And what we're going to be seeing in this, in this clip is she's starting to come to reality that the dream that she was sold that she needs to get a higher education, that she needs to make six figures, is not working out for her. So this, this conversation is going to get very risky. Kevin's going to be asking some very hot questions. And at the end of it, we're going to see, did she learn her lessons? And what can we pull out of this, both as men and women, so that we can make improvements in our dating life? So without further ado, let's pass it over to the Godfather. Um, and having a public career, public facing career, uh mm -hmm. celebrity stars people get counseling all the time it would have been wiser to do it uh back then so we wouldn't just be because you're only a, you're only a month into it now mm -hmm. you're not ready okay. and, I'm, and i'm telling you in the interaction i'm having with you you're you're editing yourself right now but i can feel that i can feel what you're doing how am and i so editing you, myself um Look, man, I'm good at what I do. I don't have thousands of people watching me because I don't. But what I'm telling you, even <laughs> if you're as attractive as you say you are, mm -hmm. um, you you will be difficult to date. Mm. Why? Because you're still broken. Mm -hmm. You want to go back and forth with me over some things. And I'm like, man, five years. And if it hurt that much, that means between 2017 and last month, the guys that you've interacted with were getting pieces. You know, it's one thing that, you know, a lot of women get offended when they say that typically men, high value men, want younger women, you know, women in the ages of 20 to 25 in that in that age bracket. And a lot of older women, you know, especially in their 30s, get offended. Now, why is that? It's because of the extra baggage that comes along with it. You know, it's said that men age like wine. As they get older, they get more experience, they get more success, they get more notches on their belt, uh, as per se. But when it comes to women, it's not the same. As she becomes older, especially if she's been single, if she's been through a lot of trauma, a lot of relationships, she starts to bring that baggage into the next relationship that a man is typically not willing to accept and as a guy that starts to have options and as we get to, a little bit deeper into the story the type of men that she's going to go after they don't want to deal with that baggage they don't want a 38 year old woman that's been through trauma after trauma they want a, a woman that's fresh that's moldable and that's willing to go along with the program so let's get back into it so the problem isn't finding men who are ready to do whatever even if you met a perfect man you're not whole enough to be a, a wife. Which is what mm -hmm. I talk about often on this show. Professional, attractive, successful women whose relationship skills are completely unfit for the things they say they want. Hmm. And it's because you, you, we have such a stigma in the black community about therapy. Um, so we're the last people to go seek it. Then when we do go seek it, we don't want it to take as long as it does. Um, and then the sad part is we start diagnosing everybody else when you're a novice in therapy. Um, if you know you ultimately want to get married, the best thing to do is, um, when's the last time you saw your ex? Um, he came to my father's funeral. So in September. I, I see in the same city. No. Okay. Um, and when you date now, mm -hmm. um, well, I have to ask, how do you get your itch scratched? Do you have an itch scratcher? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. I'm okay uh, with that. Does he know you're in, does he know he's an itch scratcher? Yes. Yeah. And he's been scratching your itch for quite a while. Are, are you talking about my ex or... No, I'm talking about the guy you're having sex with. Oh, okay. No, I'm sorry. Honestly, I thought you were actually talking about like a, a toy. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, a physical. <laughs> no, need. I don't. No, I'm not 
intimate with anybody. When was the last time you were intimate with someone? Uh, last month. Yo, even Kevin's face with that. Like she says she's not intimate with anybody, but yet she was intimate with somebody last month. Like guys, that's how far society, I guess you could say is progress or digress that we don't consider that messing around with somebody. Where back in the day, a woman would wait until marriage or if not, you know, months, if not years to be with somebody. And in this case, you know, this woman said she's not intimate with somebody, but yet just a couple weeks ago, she was intimate with somebody. And that's where you can kind of see the traditional face of Kevin Samuels kind of reacting to that. I thought that was kind of funny. What is I said, but yeah, last month. Okay, but all right, and that was the per okay. So you don't have a friend with benefit that who you can have sex with on a consistent. I mean, that I, I do, but it's they're just not in Chicago. But I do. Okay, uh, it sounds very chaotic, ma'am. Um, it's not. It's not chaotic. Uh, I okay. Now you're, I think you're absolutely right when you talk about, you know, being a whole woman and having broken pieces and things to fix, which is why I'm seeking the help. But my life is not chaotic. I'm saying that, uh, uh, and say you're, okay. Um, choose whatever word you, fits. It just doesn't sound very simple. Um, if you have someone in, that you have as a friend with benefits, somebody that's have sex with, but they're not in town. But I don't state. need it like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not that serious to me. So that's why that, I don't think that that's a complicated part of my life because it's not that necessary. So sex is so. OK, so then why do you have a why do you have a battery operated buddy if it's not that necessary? I mean, the physical touch of a man is not that necessary for me well, to that, have to fly that, out to L.A. That, and thank you. And right there. Thank you. Thank you. The physical touch of a man is not that necessary because you have a better operated buddy. And see, that's the brokenness, which is the chaotic part. What I'm just saying is that just because, I'm just because you can, to. just because, okay. All right. Um, this is, this could possibly get very messy. At the end of the day, man, at 38 years old, <laughs> the issue is not mm -hmm. men. The issue is not mm -hmm. men. The issue is not men, especially men in Chicago. In an international city, there are plenty of marriageable men that are damn sure are earning well, who are marriage minded. Uh -huh. I got yeah. I, Excuse me. I said there, there certainly are. I mean, I literally right. just moved here on Saturday. Right. <laughs> so, um, but I will tell you, without a shadow of a doubt, um, the, you know, if you are, uh, what kind of what kind of income do you want your potential husband to make? Um, you know, honestly, I've never been that much of a stickler when it comes to that. Give me a ballpark. Um, this ballpark. I would say, I would say maybe 200. So she's not a stickler for income, but yet she wants her dream partner to make at least $200,000 a year. So that's coming up on 20 grand a month, a little less than 20 grand a month. So she's 38. She's looking for a typically probably a, a, a guy that's under the age of 50 that's single potentially has no children makes less than makes about 20 grand a month and wants a woman that's 38 years old with a bunch of baggage so you can see how a woman that's in her category can be put in a very difficult situation but let's see what kevin samuels has to say about that two hundred thousand dollars do you, do you care if he has kids or not no i mean okay at this at my age i feel like men that i'm gonna meet that and are older and, and like how tall, and do you care how, how 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 tall he is I mean, as long as he's maybe five nine and up. How tall are you? Five five. Five five. Um, all right. Um, what percentage of men in this country earn over two hundred thousand dollars? Oh, jeez. Um, well, if we're talking black men, um, nope, just men. Period. Just men. Uh, maybe six percent. Right. So, and men who are making that kind of money. Six percent, roughly. Um, they, for the most part, are the cream of the crop of financial earners. They mm -hmm. have their pick of the litter. So I right. asked the question. I asked. I asked the question of you, and I asked all women: Why would a man who's earning two hundred thousand dollars plus, who can have any woman, want you? You know, uh, something about this scenario is this woman sounds like she is, sounds like she's fairly attractive. She makes you know, good money for herself. But and she lives in Chicago, a place that's uh, a major city in the United States where there's plenty of wealthy men, top one percent men. So this woman, 
I don't know her, but by the sounds of it, it sounds like she was the type of girl that wanted to live through her 20s. She passed up many, many great men that were suitable to be her husband, maybe even uh, chances to be engaged. Uh, and she traded that. She traded that potentially for school. She traded that for her career. She traded that for to have fun. She traded it for the, the Chirones and the Chads and didn't go with the guys that actually were suitable for her. So now she's at the end of her, uh, what what, what uh, Kevin Sanders would call leftovers, right? She's leftovers. And she's starting to have this panic attack that, you know what? She's not as young as she used to be. She doesn't have the options that she used to be. And she wants to settle. She wants something serious. But those men that she, w that w that she wants to be serious with don't want to take her serious because she's a leftover woman right they want younger women she's starting to panic a little bit you can start to hear it in her voice but she may not want to accept it i would be coming in with also my own you know six figure salary don't and give a shit about your money i know they don't but i'm just saying i would be coming in with my own so it's not like i'm coming to them with my money but i know that i have R Rochelle, a really we, we don't care about your money or your career habit but it doesn't let me tell you why let me tell you ladies why this doesn't matter because you're not gonna, we don't have access to it anyway, and you're gonna be spending it on us. So why, your money why doesn't. Why would you say that? Uh, okay. Do women in general? Who 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 in general funds the relationship? I would say men in general right. fund the Who's relationship, a, exactly. but why would a woman not want to do for her man too? Um. Well, this is gonna be another problem, man. Um, what is your, your vertical, your career path? You don't tell me the exact title. Um, I work in higher education. All right. Um, hmm. women typically don't spend money on men. You know, as we go ahead and, and check this out, you know, what I think is funny is that there's two different types of scenarios here. We have a scenario when we look at Fresh and Fit podcast where we have the younger girls from Miami that are 19, 20, 23, 24 that are thinking that they're going to have all the opportunities in the world to, to have men, right? Men are just throwing themselves out there. And then we see it on the other spectrum when we come on the podcast of Kevin Samuels where we have a professional woman that's a, typically above the age of 35 years old that comes on and does not have those same results that she used to get when she was younger. And it's so cool to see both dynamics of the younger girls that think that everything's going to be perfect and that the other side is just not going to, uh, uh, and that the other side where it's just the, they're not having those results that they used to and they're starting to have a panic attack. So it's really cool to see both dynamics. Period. Point blank, end of sentence. Uh, I do very well for myself and it's not a surprise. We laugh about how in, how you can buy a Birkin bag over here, but they think they bought you a video game. It's something. Mm -hmm. What's the most you've ever What's the most you've ever spent on your man? That's not a birthday, Christmas, or anniversary type. You're just on a Tuesday. <laughs> um, I actually um I spent it was a, a to me bag that I bought for one of my exes, and it was like about six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollar. Then that ain't that ain't shit. I spent mm -hmm. $600 at dinner. So I'm sorry, your six figure job and everything else don't mean shit to us because your bag, the shoes that I bought you was 600. I could pull $600 worth of shit and throw it at this camera right now. I'm in New York City and I was, anyway, $600. That's what I mean. I, I say that, man, because when I say stuff, you ladies want to push back and like, well, I make it. It don't matter if we don't have access. To I wasn't it. pushing back. I didn't even I get say a ladies in general, it, we don't have access. We don't have <laughs> access to your money. We don't have access to your money and we're not going to be able to spend it. And that's fine. So what else do you bring? What else? He like said, why would he want you? And you were going to, outside of your money and your accomplishments. What else do you bring to the table? Um, I bring, I think that for me, I think that I'm a very, very supportive woman when it comes to, I know in my past relationships, when it comes to their dreams and their goals, I know that I am able to speak life into them. Um, I'm extremely submissive um in a sense i actually sometimes when you're in these senior roles as a woman and you're like this dominant figure all day long it's nice to come home and be able to just be submissive it's being submissive helps me to relax honestly in relationships um so your five-year relationship did you live with him yes i did um and he had earned you no i earned him Say again? No, I out earned him. Okay. Um, substantially? 
Um, yes. Did he go to college? Did he or did I? Did he? Um, no. And where'd you graduate from? Johns Hopkins. You need to book five sessions. <laughs> I'm going to leave it right here, man, because you you go. My website is buykevinsamuels.com. I don't want to do this right here. You know, Kevin's actually joking around here, but he's he, in, in a way he's being serious because what this woman has done is she has narrowed and put herself in her back against the wall here. She's 38 years old. She's highly educated, going to one of the best schools in the United States. Uh, um, she's a high earner. And her, her, even when, even if she was 25, 27 years old, her, her, her pool of men that she could choose from that could be potential husbands that can build, you know, a family with was narrow then. But now that she's 38 years old, passed up probably multiple opportunities of great men that wanted to have relationships with her. And she's bringing in all that baggage. She needs a lot of help. So it's actually funny how Kevin says, you know, book a call. But, you know, Kevin doesn't talk about this, but there's something else that, he hinted but wasn't exposed which is this she's the type of woman that likes to be with men that are a little bit less than her so she can feel that sense of superior right so obviously if she went to a great school she's in higher education she likes she likes progress right so typically these two uh these women have two types of men they either go for the top top guys or they like to go for guys that are below them that they have a sense of control, a sense of, you know what, I'm helping this guy get on his feet. They typically earn more than them. The guy's uneducated or not uh, college educated, like she mentioned here. So this woman has a sense of control or a sense of th that same accomplishment that, hey, I had that over my man. And so I don't know her personally, but if I was to, to look at this deeper and ask her questions, I would probably see that she's a woman that likes control. She likes a, a woman that likes to be in control of the relationship. And that's probably another a reason why the guys did not want to be with her. So, guys, if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe below because I'm going to be completing out more content from the godfather, Kevin Samuels. Rest in peace to him. Hit the like button. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.